Good afternoon, everyone. How are you? So I'm here, as always, on Tuesday afternoons to share with you some tips, some insights on how to take better care of yourself, both physically, emotionally, mentally, and the role that food plays in all of that to help you get beyond sugar cravings and emotional eating things. So I've shared with you some things about how you can use food and even essential oils, the gifts of plants, I call it, real food, to support our bodies in dealing with the day-to-day stressors of life and things that, you know, we carry, I've explained how we carry around residues or unresolved experiences, emotional traumas in our bodies, and how we can use the gifts of plants to help you uh, free your body from that or heal from that, do the emotional healing work. So what I want to talk to you today about is how foods can also affect your mood in a good and a not so good way. So one of the things that I discovered when I was learning how to get beyond sugar cravings is that there was five different factors that needed to be addressed synergistically. And one of those is a dealing with the issues of your heart or the emotional um, health. And that's, I've talked a lot about that. Another thing is really looking at your digestive tract, your digestive health. Hello, thanks for tuning in. And did you know that there are like 10 times as many bacterial organisms, microorganisms and bacteria in your body than there are cells. When I first heard that, I was like, what? (laughs) There's quite a lot of them. But in our gut, there's a tremendous amount of different strains of bacteria, microorganisms and yeasts. And did you know that they have a huge impact on your moods? So if you're not taking care of having a healthy gut flora, or if this is even a new thing for you, you don't know much about it, then I really suggest that you learn about it. Do some research. Um, There's always online summits of people doing classes and presentations about them. Um, If you want some resources about that, then reach out to me. I can give them to you. So just drop me a note below. But there's a lot of research showing how the microbiome, the gut bacteria, have a lot to do with your moods and how happy you are or irritated and angry and depressed. So how does that work? So your bacteria make a lot of other compounds, like a lot of the nutrients and vitamins and and enzymes and stuff that we need to digest our food as well as just maintain our body to be healthy, much of that is made by the bacteria in our gut or they're very involved in the processes of digestion and and of your food to break it down so that it can be absorbed into your blood. If that gets out of whack or out of balance, then you feel it. So they respond very, um, there's a, very close relationship to how they respond and what you are, give them, what kind of foods you eat. So if you're eating a lot of like whole foods, plant-based foods, things that the earth made, not things that were made in a manufacturing plant, but real plants from the earth, then your microbiome is going to reflect that. They're going to be able to draw on all the nutrients from those plants and make whatever all the chemicals and vitamins and stuff that they need in order for you to function. One of the things that they make is serotonin and dopamine. So do you guys know what those are? Just give me a thumbs up if you do um, or don't. Serotonin is the bonding feel-good molecule. And for a long time, then scientists thought that it was only produced by the brain. However, it's been found and discovered that 80-90% of it is made in your gut. And whether or not your gut critters, I call them your microbiome, can make that depends on what they're given, what they're fed. Also, dopamine, it's another neurotransmitter that helps with getting you feeling like motivated and to take action and do your thing throughout the day as well as a feel-good molecule. 
So you be, need both of those to help you be in a good place emotionally and mentally. If you're not giving your body the foods that it needs to function properly, to be healthy, then your microbiome is going to reflect that and it's not going to be able to make the nutrients including the serotonin and dopamine that you need. And so that's going to affect your moods because you don't have enough of those neurotransmitter chemicals. Another thing that happens is if your diet overall is subpar, meaning it it's, has a lot of foods that don't have a lot of nutritional value or don't have a lot of life force energy in them, meaning they come, most of your diet food comes out of a box from the freezer section or out of a can, is processed and packaged and there's a lot of added chemicals to that, that's going to break down, number one, the integrity of your intestinal tract, the lining, the tissues, but it's also going to affect your microbiome. And the bacteria will then change their form and their function according to what you feed them. So if you're feeding yourself a lot of processed packaged foods with a lot of chemicals in them, with a lot of added sugar and salt and too much fat, that's going to throw your my, the bacteria balance out of whack. And so you'll start, start to develop strains of bacteria that are more pathogenic, more unhealthy or unfriendly, and then that's going to set up other problems. It's also going to change their appetite, which then changes your appetite to where you start craving or wanting those unhealthy foods because that's what your gut bacteria has gotten used to. Another thing that happens is if you have too much sugar in the diet, then the candida yeast, which is a benign yeast that everybody has it, that gets out of whack in that it starts growing too much and too fast and it becomes very aggressive. And then it can bore holes through the intestinal lining and get into the interstitial space, getting into your bloodstream, and then start wandering through your body. And then before you know it, you've got a yeast infection or a yeast overgrowth. And so that can create a lot of problems too. So you really want to look at what are you eating? What's, what are you putting into your mouth? Is it real good nutritious foods that's going to support your microbiome so that that will in turn support your moods? to be more optimistic and healthy and happy and uplifting? Or are you doing things that's going to set upset the balance of your gut so that the microbiome changes their form and their function so that that creates a more acidic, um, lower functioning condition to where your your intestines, your, your digestion's not working right. It starts to get, become compromised. When that happens, your moods also go because your moods will reflect that in a very intimate, close way. Hello, thanks for tuning in. So I just wanted to share that with you today of really looking at what are you putting into your mouth because that, that influences a lot your emotional and mental health and your balance. Hello, Kathy. Thanks for tuning in. So if you do notice that you are upset all the time, you're more moody, you're more irritated, you're angry, short-tempered, there's a lot of anxiety, what can you do about that? Well, number one, that tells you that there's things going on probably in your gut that's making it off balance and your microbiome is off balance and contributing to those moods. So you'd want to... Number one, start feeding yourself real good quality foods from the earth the earth made, like vegetables, tubers, um, fermented foods, fruits and vegetables, nuts and seeds. Get rid of the sugar-filled, artificially flavored, artificially colored, packaged foods that have very little nutritional value in them. It's throwing everything off. 
switch those around, start eating some really good quality foods and see how you feel. Another thing that you can do to really support your microbiome is fermented foods. And they've gotten really popular over the last several years and there's a lot of them out and now that you can choose from. One of them would be like kumbacha tea. Another thing like kefirs, which is made from either a goat's or cow milk or nut, uh, I've seen them with almond milk. So, or almond, uh, coconut water. So those are fermented uh, drinks, liquid drinks that have a good strain of microbi of, of gut critters in them, I call them. You can also look for yogurts. Um, and I want to caution you, anytime you do dairy, then really look at the ingredients because too often there's too much added sugar to it. And you want to make sure that if it's milk-based, then it's made from organic milk. There's too much contamination and not good things have been done to factory farmed conventional milk. There's too much impurities in that. There's a lot of chemical um, pesticide antibiotic residue in there. There's a lot of impurities in there. And it's just not fit for human consumption, in my opinion. It's just not healthy. So I would look for organic milk if you're going to use the yogurts and kefirs. Another thing that's really popular is um, fermented vegetables. And these, there's so many ve different varieties and recipes out there that now that you can make. It's really quite simple and easy. Um, sauerkrauts have been con uh, traditionally used for a long time, but, and that's made with cabbage. But you can make it with a lot of other different varieties of, of vegetables too. Uh, when I make mine, I'll just shred up a cabbage, either a green Napa cabbage or a purple cabbage, and I'll throw in some, either an apple or a pear, um, sometimes carrots and beets, uh, cucumbers. I've put in zucchini squash. I put in asparagus before. Um, what else have I put in? Uh, carrots, I mentioned that. But there's just a, a variety of different things. Di Diacon radish is really good to put into to fermented vegetables. So you just chop them up or shred them up into a food processor. Add a little bit of water if you need to, just to make sure that it's uh, moist. They'll have a lot of their own juices mixed in together by the time you have this big bowl of shredded vegetables. So you really don't need much added moisture. And then I'll put in a little bit of sea salt and a little bit of uh, a packet of star of kefir starter, which has some strain, half a dozen different strains of bacteria. And I'll just mix all that up, put it in a jar, put it in the, in the cupboard for a couple of weeks, and then I'll put it in the fridge. And I've got a really nice, robust blend of for, for, uh, fermented vegetables. So that's an easy way to use it. So you'll want to add in foods that will support your microbiome, that will feed it, that will heal your gut, um, that will really nourish you, your body. So that will help uh, rebalance the microbiome if it's gotten off. Another thing that you would need to do is cleanse your digestive tract. Go on a detox or a cleanse. Um, what, how you would do that, hello Bruno, uh, is you would go on a juice fast for about 7 to 10 days. Or if that's too intense, then just simply eat salads. Yeah, really, just salads, just fruits and vegetables, nothing else for seven to 10 days. Have lots of liquids and um, some herbal teas and juices. But if you need to do it slower, then just do fruits and vegetables, nothing else for seven to 10 days. If you can do it a little bit, uh, step it up a little bit more, then just do juice seven to 10 days on juices. And that can be either fr a combination of fruit juices or vegetable juices or some of both. Depending on the blend, then I will put like kales and collards or dandelions, spinach, you know, a lot of dark leafy greens in there. Um, sometimes I'll throw in some peppers, bell peppers, some cucumbers. And if I feel like it's a little too tart or if it needs a little balance of sweetening, then I'll put in a, a carrot 
or a beet or an apple or a pear. So that's a really good fruit, um, vegetable blend. Then you can do all kinds of fruit juices, um, papaya, uh, pineapple, um, berries, watermelon, apple, pear, peach, grapes, you know, a lot of different, hello, thanks for tuning in, a lot of different uh, fruit blends that you can make. It's just leave it up to your imagination. It's infinite combinations you can do. So just go through the produce section and pick out three or four different fruits that you like. Citrus, any kind of a citrus fruit uh, is always very cleansing and rebalancing. So you can make just some citrus fruits and then you can make a, a, do those for two or three days and then you can do, hello Paula, and then you can do another two or three days of like say a vegetable juice blend and then another two or three days of a different type of a fruit blend. So pick about three or four different fruits, three or four different vegetables, and just juice them. Invest in a good juicer and do that for seven to ten days. Um, clean out your, your colon. You, there's some intestinal colon cleansers that you can get. If you want some, then ask me. Then I can, I can direct you to some of those. And just allow food to cleanse, to heal, to restore and strengthen your digestive tract. And in doing so, then it resets your body's microbiome. It shifts them so that they're get back on track, so to speak, of not, over, not having certain strains being overgrowth that would cause problems like the yeast. And then it would help encourage the growth of the strains that your gut does need. And it just resets everything. The times of years to do it, you know, you can do it pretty much any time, but spring and fall is, or any time when the seasons change, it's always a good time. Um, we're going into winter here in the Northern Hemisphere. That would be a good time. So the, the end point is just really look at how you're caring for your digestive, digestive system and especially the microbiome. There's a lot of things you can do to support that they do really impact the state of your moods. So if you find, like you said, you're cranky and ornery and, and agitated and depressed all the time, go on a cleanse and do a colon cleanse. That will help really shift your body so that it can break down the molecules of all of those emotions that get stored and recycled in your liver that's making you cranky and upset and, and ornery. Um, also, if you're constipated, if you've got too much stuff sitting, sitting in your large intestine, that too is going to affect your moods and make you irritable. So a lot of simple things that you can do to support your moods just with diet and self-care. So I wanted to leave those tips with you and those ideas with you today. Um, question for you. Let me know how many of you have done a cleanse like that. Are you interested in trying to do one or learning more about it? If so, then just drop me a note or drop me a line below. I talk a lot about that plus more in my study group that's all about how to get beyond sugar cravings, how to free yourself from emotional eating, and all of the different facets that are required to look at in order to do so. So from emotional health to gut health to act, lifestyle activities, a lot of different things. So if you want some more information about that, then just drop me a note. I'm happy to share my study group with you and you can learn from me more directly or more in depth and improve your health. All right. So thanks for tuning in and just drop me a line, like I said, and I will talk to you soon. Take care.